Hello everyone. Welcome you all for today's session. In this session, you will learn about the yield testing, which is a vital function in a food business operation. This is used to determine the final yield of the product that is consumable after all the processing is complete. You will also learn the various types of yield test used in a kitchen. So it will help you to standardize the recipe and the cost of a dish. At the end of the session, you will be able to define what is yield, explain what is yield testing, identify different types of yield testing used in food business operations and describe the terminology used with yield testing. Yield is the amount of food material that is available for consumption after the food is prepared and processed and turned into final product. A standard yield is the yield obtained when an item is processed as per the particular standard methods of preparation, cooking and portioning of an establishment. Yield percentage is defined as the percentage of the whole purchased unit of an item that is available for portioning after any required processing has been completed. This percentage is calculated by dividing the weight obtained by original weight of the item before processing. Yield test is performed on each item with respect to the product that needs to be made from that item. For example, an yield test may be done for oranges, for orange juice and for wedges, segments, slices separately. Yield testing is a very time consuming but an important process as it helps the establishment to set its own standard yields for each of the items purchased. This helps to decide whom to purchase from, determine accurately what output each item gives and set standards for purchase for each item. Yield testing is defined as a technique to determine accurately the amount of raw materials needed to produce a certain amount of final processed product. These processes may include trimming, butchering, cutting, cooking or some combination of these. During these process, fat, bone and other inedible or unnecessary parts are removed. Also in some cases, fat is removed by melting during cooking process. All these processes result in weight loss and thus the quantity available for portioning or serving weighs less than the quantity originally purchased. For effective yield testing, it is important to weigh the item after each set of process is completed. Before discussing the types of yield testing, I would like to discuss the objectives or the importance of yield testing. Yield testing is important for an establishment for the following functions. First, to determine product pricing. Second, to set purchase specifications and receiving standards. Third, to forecast purchase quantity and ordering levels. Fourth, establishing standard recipes and portion size. Fifth, for setting control standards. Sixth, comparison of vendor prices and quality. Seventh, monitoring the usage of raw materials. Generally, yield is calculated by using two methods. First is raw yield test, second cooked yield test. Raw yield test is also known as butcher's test. The butcher's test, as the name states, is mainly done for meats, fish and poultry purchased as wholesale cuts. It is used to determine the standard yield and portion cost of those items portioned portioned before cooking. For the purpose of conducting a butcher's test, a specific format is being used which is shown over here in the slide and this is called as raw yield test form. In this format, all the required details of the item to be tested are mentioned. For example, like item name, price per pound, supplier name, total cost, as purchase weight, etc. 
and all the details of the weight of usable as well as non-usable parts like fat, bone, cutting loss, etc. are recorded. And then the individual parts are turned into a monetary value by multiplying their weight with the market price of each item. Thus, one can get the value of usable as well as the non-usable parts. And finally, net cost can be calculated by subtracting the total cost by the value of non-usable parts. And accordingly, the actual cost per pound can be achieved by dividing the net cost by the total yield obtained. Butcher's test must be conducted regularly on a reasonable number of pieces so that so as to get a more accurate yield of each item depending on what it is going to be used for. The purpose of conducting a butcher test are like uh, butcher test is also conducted to monitor the extent to which any one dealer is adhering to specifications. With the help of butcher's test result, menu prices can be planned because costs are known. The butcher's test is also valuable to compare the cost of a pre-portioned item purchased from the vendor as against the cost of the same item processed in the establishment. Cooked yield test is also known as cooking loss yield test. No yield testing is complete without determining the weight of the item that is available for serving or otherwise called the saleable weight. <coughs> Many items are portioned after cooking. Also, there is a considerable amount of weight loss during cooking in terms of loss of moisture and fat. Thus, the primary purpose of cooking loss test is to determine the standard final yield and thus determine the standard portion size and cost. When conducting the cooking loss test, a specific format is used which is called as cooked yield test form and that is shown over here in the slide. It is important to note down the weight of the item available before cooking that is after all the trimming, cutting and removing of fat if any. Then the item is cooked as per the standard procedure and the weight of the item is noted down. If the standard recipe requires the bone and cooked fat to be removed then the item is again weighed after final portioning is done and this is recorded as saleable weight. This saleable weight is also called the final yield or the portion size weight of the item. The main purpose of conducting a cooking loss test is to determine which of the several available grades of commodities would yield maximum saleable weight of the desired quality. Also, cooking loss test may be used to compare the results of cooking several pieces at different temperature or for different lengths of time or in different methods so as to maximize the yield keeping the quality standards in consideration. Once the weight and the value of the saleable portion is known, the standard portion size, the price and the cost can be determined and the standard can be established. There are certain terms which are generally used in association with yield testing. For example, first is AP, which can be elaborated as as purchased. It is the portion of the food that is in the raw state before cutting, processing or cooking has occurred. Next is EP, which can be elaborated as edible portion. Edible portion is used in food composition tables to indicate the part of the food that is usually eaten after excluding skin or pips of fruits and vegetables, bones in meat and fish. The next is cooked weight, which is the weight of the item after it has been cooked as per the standard procedure. The next is sal saleable weight. It is the unit weight or quantity which is served. By this, we come to an end of the session. In the upcoming session, 
you will learn about the duties and responsibilities of a larger ship and functions of a larger department as it will assist you in better understanding the operations of a larger department thank you so much for watching the video stay safe